morning, good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, wherever you are, or maybe even good night hey, as we get started here on the five day growth challenge hey, as we jump on and, and get to going here. I just wanted to get a couple things set up as we go truly live and um, let me make sure that the monitor is, is checking. And so, hey, as you are jumping on and I uh, hey, just wanted to say shout out this afternoon to you as we start day one. That's right, day one of the Growth Challenge. And let me get over and hit record so I can get back here and really get to going and um, uh, share my screen. So as we start, note to self. See here. Uh oh, sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. But hey, hey, hopefully this uh, Monday is going well for you and you're having an awesome, awesome day. Or if you're watching the replay, regardless, you're having an awesome, awesome day. But we're going to share our screen and get going here as we get ready to go out and have an awesome, awesome, awesome day. So, what, what's happening here? Okay, hey, having a few technical, but hey, we're going to work through it real quick and uh, let's see. Escape, slideshow, set up slideshow. Yep, we did. Cool. Slideshow from the beginning. Hey, so um, what kind of quarter are you having? So as you get started here, you know, I challenge and ask that question. What kind of quarter are you having as you um, get ready to move through? And and that's the whole purpose of what we're doing today is, is really helping you crush the quarter. You know, so if you would put hashtag crush the quarter. So that's one of the things that we want to get done and uh, do today. So um, is in that process of truly, truly crushing the quarter. So hopefully um, you got your pen and paper out. Uh, you've already joined the growth challenge. Um, so you'll get some, some other good things coming. If you got the email from us, uh, make sure that you be part of that. So I want to say again, welcome, welcome to day one. That's right, day one of the five day growth challenge. Hey, we do this once a quarter where we really dive in and help you grow by challenging you to do a few key things each each day. And so day one is all about finding your ideal client. But before we get into that, I just wanted to, you know, if you would just post in the feed, um, you know, who is your ideal client? Who do you think it is? It may shift and change after we finish here. So I want you to post that in the uh, feed saying, hey, my ideal client is, my ideal customer is. So for each product and service, I'm going to challenge you to have and understand who that person is. And so we're going to give you a little homework at the end. So make sure you do the homework because when you do the homework, you get great results. It's the practice before game time that allows you to hit the game winning shots. And so that's what we're going to work on um, on this eve of March Madness or Final Four. And we're going to work on that so you can go out and have your best week yet. So with that said, I want to get right into it. So I want you to write this down. Who is your ideal client slash customer? And I said that because, you know, just depending on the industry, you may call them a client, you may call them a customer. Um, there's a slightly different meaning, but we won't get into that. So the person who writes you the check, the person who swipes their credit card, the person who pays you the cash, that is who, you know, I want you to ask, answer that question. So who's that ideal person? So one of the things I want you to think about, you know, who's the most profitable customer? See, sometimes we don't think about it from that standpoint. So if you clog your pipeline, clog your system, with none ideal clients, you're going to have a rough time as a business owner. And so most profitable, most enjoyable, you know, what clients energize you, what customers energize you, you know, you want to be there for them. And so that, that, that's what you want to look at. You want to say who excites me and, and, and who energized me. And then uh, when it comes into our space of coaching and training, you know, are they teachable? Which clients are teachable? And so I want you to, begin to think about that. And I'm going to give you seven questions today to help you really uh, dive in a little deeper and, and focus on who your ideal client is. Because I think it's very key that you spend some time doing this five-day challenge is saying, who is it that I really want to work for? Yes, I did say work for because your clients, you're there to serve them and you're helping them grow. By, through your products, your tools, your service, 
So I don't know, you know, who may be listening, but the principles are the same. So remember that principles are few, processes are many. So let's get started here as we move forward with this. So number one, what scenarios or situations make your prospects first consider buying what you sell? Hmm. And see, I want you to begin to think about this here because, you know, what is it that causes them to first raise their hand, to first consider? See, I didn't say purchase because, you know, it, it, you have to, and I love the words in uh, Jerry Maguire where, um, you know, Jerry was going on and on. And she said, you had me at hello. How can you get them at hello? You know, how can you get them at hello? I think to me, that is one of the key things you want to ask yourself. How can you get them at hello? So what is it, you know, that ideal client? So what are those scenarios and situations that make them want to buy? And so when you understand that, then you're able to market to that on an ongoing basis. You're able to communicate that on an ongoing basis in your marketing. But it's very key that you understand that to begin with. And so that's what I want to challenge you to think about in uh, question number one is really, how do you get them at hello? Hello. Hey, you had me at hello. Just remember that. You had me at hello. So number two, you know, what needs, frustrations, fears, pains, you know, do your prospects experience that motivate them to buy? And what are those, you know, what, what, is, what is their need? What, what are their needs? What's frustrating them? You know, what, what are they fearful of? You know, what pains, you know, are they having? See, see, when we begin to dive deep, we're getting beyond the physical, we're getting into the psychographics of what our clients and who our clients are. But we want to focus on who's our best client, okay? Our goodest client, our, our, I mean, our, our very, very, very goodest client, our best, best client. So that's what I want you to really focus on as we, as you answer these questions. But, so if you're writing this out, simply make a chart, okay? I want you to make a chart and simply say, hey, what needs, what frustrations? And it could just simply be needs, frustrations, fears, pains. And so by putting those and then just think of everything that, comes under each one. So you think of everyone that comes under each one. And so I want to challenge you to think about it from that standpoint. And when you do that, it's going to make it easier for you to, to see and share who your ideal client is, who your ideal customer is. The next thing is, what do your, your prospects feel they need and expect as a result of their purchase? See, see, as we go back we talked about what experienced them to motivate them to buy. That's number one, you know, but then number two is now that they've decided to buy from you, what do they expect? You know, what is your red carpet experience? Are they expecting the red carpet experience? Maybe, maybe not. You know, so when you provide them that red carpet experience, you're going to wow them. So you want to, ask yourself, hey, what is it that, you know, I am going to provide to them? You know, what, what is that red carpet experience? So I want you to think about that, but think about it from the customer standpoint. See, oftentimes we think about the golden rule. Do unto others as we want to be done unto. But I, I challenge you to think about the platinum rule. The platinum rule is do unto others as they want to be done unto. And so what are their needs? You know, what do they feel once they do the transaction? What do they expect as a result of that purchase? So you want, you want to ask yourself that as you move forward through this. Number four, what would your prospect be delighted to receive as a result? And see, that's what we're talking about is that red carpet. See, one is what they expect, and then how do you wow them? How do you wow them? And that is the hardest thing to do in business. You know, oftentimes we don't wow our clients. And so how can you wow the clients with your experience? Well, you say, Howard, I may, I may be a plumber. I may be doing something um, 
that's out of need. I may be an electrician or I may be a realtor. I may be a, hey, hey, no matter what you are, ask yourself, what can you do to wow them? You know, what can you do to wow them as part of that transaction? So I want to challenge you to think about that and, and begin to write some things down. You know, as you write them down, also, you know, share it with others. You know, your thinking partners. You know, that's one of the things we do in our group coaching sessions is that we bring things like this to the table to help you have a sounding board. Because oftentimes in, as entrepreneurs, we don't have very many people in our inner circle that can we can bounce things off of. So getting those new, fresh ideas. So I want you to begin to ask yourself, how can you wow that person? How can you wow them? See, that's the key thing. You know, number one, they expect certain things, but then when they're delighted or wowed, then that's when they begin to talk about that experience. They begin to talk about you as the provider. They begin to talk about your your customers and, and I mean, I'm sorry, your your employees and and really begin to say, hey, that experience with was, <laughs> I just tell you, you need to go do it, okay? You just need to go experience it because it was. And so that is the wow you want to have. But ask yourself the question, what is it? Next is what problems or frustrations or challenges, you know, do they expect with the industry? Hmm. See, Every industry has some little bad things that um, they're, you know, people expect. You know, in the service industry, hey, service guy shows up late. I got a four-hour window. I won't be waiting half a day, and they're going to show up at the very end of it. Um, you know, they're going to come in and uh, I take care of my carpet or my floor, walk through, truck, whatever they had on their shoes before they came into my house or whatever it may be. You know that old plumber adjective that you can see his all right so hey, you know but whatever it is you know you may be a coach or a trainer and and part of it is that i don't want to sit through boring training anymore you know it, it, this right here focus challenged me to change the way in which i do one of my mastermind programs right this is really a group coaching inside of our corporate environment and so we really had to tweak it to overcome some of those frustrations and challenges that people see with trainers, okay? I didn't want to be that same old trainer. And so we got some things that we're doing to help wow the client, but help broaden the experience, help wow the client and then help broaden the experience. So that is what you want to begin to, to do. So ask yourself the questions and you can Google it. I mean, you know, this is one that's very Googleable if you would, <laughs> Googleable, but you can literally just type the phrase in. You know, what frustrations do people have with A, B, C? And study the answer and ask yourself, hey, what do I do? You know, I have a promotional marketing company and one of the things, um, you know, frustration people have with it is not getting orders on time you know, turnaround time. And, you know, that's broad, but that is one of the frustrations or challenges that people see in our industry. And so what we try to do in our company is we try to manage those expectations by saying, here's what we're going to do. If you do this by this time, here's what happens. So I challenge you to think about it from that standpoint. And then the next thing, you know, what potential problems or frustrations do your prospect dread when they think of buying what you sell. So you see, there's two things. One, that is known. And then now you want to get inside of what are they thinking? What, what are they thinking? What are they dreading? And so you can overcome those objections before they happen. But you begin to ask, who is my ideal client? So once you started saying, here's, here's what I provide, but I know what my ideal clients are looking for, then I can go out and market to that ideal client. And we're going to talk about that later in the challenge, but you know, we want to get that foundation of who are you looking for? That's right. Who are you looking for? You know, kind of when the words of Lana Richie, hello, 
hello. But anyway, uh, hey, how it's stay away from singing. Uh, but think about it from that standpoint. You know, move that forward. And then the last thing, the last step, what would be good for your prospects to know as they make their buying decision? So you're going to help them make a decision by educating them up front, but you need to understand that, you know, you know, what is it that your ideal client want to know? So one of the things you can do is simply poll some of your current clients. Hey, if I was going to be approaching you, what would you like to know? before you met me. You know, the dating services out there online and thank God I didn't have, haven't had to use them. I had, you know, been married long enough before that stuff came around. But when you think about it is what would that person like to know before making their buying slash dating decision, okay? So I want you to write that down, you know, about your industry about you and you can add that to about you as well as your industry because that's going to give you some very very profound insight and what's going to help you begin to talk to those clients and and market those clients and, and move forward with it so i want to challenge you to think about it from that standpoint those are seven questions that i've shared with you that you're going to do and then boom Here's the assignment. Hey, see, that's the beautiful part about the challenge. Inside the seven day challenge, each day you have an assignment. Identify and describe that ideal client, okay? So you see, this stuff goes on and on to the break. No, I'm sorry, but hey, it's just feeling like that. Hey, it's almost springtime. That's right, it's springtime. Hey, but as we move forward, we spring forward into this new quarter. We crush this new quarter. I want you to identify and describe the ideal client that you want to work with over the next 91 days. Who is that ideal client that you want to work with? You know, we're going to build out what they call an avatar, but really understanding all the framework around them is even more important and more critical than quote, just building an avatar. So I want to challenge you to, to go through the seven questions as well as, as well as Describe that ideal client that you want to work with next, next 91 days. And then if you're watching this and you haven't had a chance to register, hey, simply just go to this bit, bit.ly link, uh, five day growth challenge. And guess what? You'll get all the videos, you'll get the worksheets, you get all the content um, that's happening just in case you missed the live. And you want to go back and, and replay the videos. So all of that will be available for you. Uh, just simply register for the growth challenge and um, do it now, do it now. Hey, remember, procrastination is the number one killer of businesses. Procrastination is the leading cause of lack in sales. So do it now, do it now. And then last but not least, hit the share button, that's right. Hey, it depends on what device you're on, but hit the share button. Most likely it's underneath this video. Hit the share button. Don't keep us a secret. Help some friends help themselves. That's right. Help friends help themselves. So as we close out um, day one, that's right, day one of the five-day growth challenge, I challenge you to one, go back and do the work. Go back and do the work and then go back to the assignment. Identify and describe the ideal client you want to work with over the next 91 days. So we're focusing on one quarter at a time. And because you can sprint these next 91 days, you can get focused. You know, I mean, later in the challenge, I'm going to share some of my project lists and some things. And, you know, I'm going to go through this again myself and make sure that my ideal clients are who they should be. They're going to give me the biggest return, the biggest bang. And, and that's what you want to focus on. So. This is your assignment, but answering the seven questions that I shared with you, that I shared with you, is going to help you more than anything. So I challenge you to go and do that and then join the challenge or share the challenge. So one of two things, either join the challenge or share the challenge. That's right. Join the challenge or share the challenge. And here's the link. It's a bit.ly link, five-day growth challenge. 
and we will see you in day two of the challenge. Hey, take care. God bless. And have an awesome, awesome, awesome week. But join the challenge. Bye-bye.